like to start with a uh, ditty about, about how these two met. That is, if there's anyone here who has not actually heard yet. <laughs> One day at a bar at a TJIF with a charming young man on the stool to my left. He started talking, he, I didn't resist, and he smiled and he told me his name was Chris. He knew all the bartenders and all of the staff, and we had a few beers and a couple of laughs. In very short order, I was comfy with him until a bit later when my daughter came in. <laughs> she came in to meet me and Sue after work, and in true Jessica fashion, she said, Who is this jerk? <laughs> Yeah, she's tough on the boys. We call it direct. <laughs> she's a little high strung. So what has this? I remember he said that she was a true beauty as he secretly tried to check out her booty. <laughs> he looked and he strained for a good angle of view till I said, Chris, she's a foot taller than you. <laughs> He backed off, and he said that he'd recommend that I think about having her meet his good friend. He said the guy was beyond reproach, a teacher, a master's degree, and a coach. The kind of a guy that a mother could love. Clearly a saint that he thought the world of. It took quite, quite a while for him to persuade, but I finally agreed, hey, this match could be made. So Mike got a text saying essentially, wow, stop what you're doing and get over here now. I think she's a model. And she's got it all, and she really likes guys that are especially tall. <laughs> so believe it or don't, but it really is true that this union started in a bar over a group. It may seem a bit crazy. Oh, I gotta give props here to Christopher Fazendale. <laughs> Special thanks to my son Tom today for the song that he played. <laughs> An ode from the altar to the left and above, apropos to the day, it's called Storybook Love. Mm -hmm. Special mention to Jeffrey, whose role is best man. He lost 25 pounds on his own master plan. <laughs> and to David, Mike's brother, who is long haired and gallant, and you might know him in America's Got Talent. <laughs> It's true. There's Chris, who I mentioned, and then Mikey K, who you shouldn't confuse with Mike Keller today. And finally, Jay, Michael's high school persona, who made it today despite moving to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that you noticed the girls hot as Hades, the bridesmaids, the girlies, the brides, special ladies. There is Meg, maid of honor, just as cousin and friend. They've been buds since their babies and will be till the end. From PA, we have Maura, who's been nothing but awesome, pretty, and smart, sweet, and sweet. <laughs> My friend Maribel, who wears the beach glow, is as kind and as warm-hearted as you'll ever know. And then lovely Jaya, who's always smiling. She doesn't believe me when I say it's beguiling. <laughs> and Christine, or Teeny, the artistic teacher. In small packages come the most wonderful creatures. And Lauren, the queen of the Cotton Eye Joe. Lauren, I'm hoping to see the pin hat, you know. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and sweet Carolyn Mooney, the volleyball nut, bachelorette party planner of red headed sluts. <laughs> Most of you know that my dad passed away three, three, three years in July, and we miss him each day. And Sharon, my sister, soon after was called. And yes, I'm sad, but I'm mostly enthralled, because can't you just hear their celestial Hail Mary, since Jess is the first castles or bus Mac to marry. <laughs> this is actually fun. <laughs> Made and all the bridesmaids, to all of our friends and families who came out in brigades, thank each of you as you're making this day, and thank you for all the parts that you played. In a moment, I'll talk about Michael and Jess, but first, 
the most beautiful woman here in the champagne dress. I'm going to address this next part to my wife. You are the fabric, the purpose, and my reason for life. There is no sonnet or verse that has ever been written that comes close to describing my level of smitten. There's no author, nor playwright, nor deaf libertist can express what I feel after having been kissed by the love of my life, my sweet Susan Clare. My love, my choice, to which none can compare. I said it before, and I'll say it times ten. Given the chance, I would do it again. If some wondrous force took us back way back when, and the lives that we lived started over again, I would find you and quote you and make you my wife. You're the fabric for the purpose and the reason for life. <laughs> With that, I would like to address this direct to the bride. Who for 26 years I have stood right beside. On the day you were born, you could follow my voice. Everything that you were would have been my first choice. As a sweet toddler, you always had questions. You'd blast me with queries in rapid succession. Daddy, if the hedge is alive, does the hedge cut kind of hurt? <laughs> when was God born? The same time as the earth? Daddy, the fish lives in water, then how does he drink? Flamingos eat shrimp, and that's why they're pink. <laughs> Your school years were easy, and everyone knew, don't worry about Jess, she will always shine through. When you got older and hit the teen years, we thought for sure you would realize our fears. But it didn't happen. You still were a joy. That is, until you brought home your first boy. <laughs> Remembering now that if you're going to date him, I'm the dad. It's my job to hate him. <laughs> you fathers and daughters will know what I'm saying. That much of our time is spent worrying and praying. Many years of our lives are spent raising our girls, protecting and teaching, cultivating our pearls. And when we succeed and their babies no longer, when our girls become women exponentially stronger, it's then we must face the sweeping frustration of finding ourselves at this stunned revelation. Success. When you're raising a sweet little girl, it means that you lose her and into the world. So wait, this is not part of my plan. I do all this work and you run off with some man? I'm sorry there, Mike, if I'm popping your bubble. But I gotta point out that you, sir, are in trouble. <laughs> I'm not so sure I sign up for this stuff. Letting go of my baby just might be too tough. It makes you think I've agreed to this plan, running her off like a Renaissance man. <laughs> you see her beauty and charm and royal graces. I see pigtails and freckles and braces. <laughs> Aren't you aware that you're taking my sweetie, running her off to Hawaii or Tahiti? <laughs> Whatever the case there, Mr. Smitty. <laughs> I know, she thinks you're all handsome and witty. <laughs> Perhaps we can find a negotiable point. And like Leighton, I'll run her butt out of this joint. <laughs> Honestly, Michael, and all kidding aside, turn over my girl as your bride. Aww. It's easy to see all the love in your eyes, your attention to her, and all it implies. I see you consistently do the right thing. I see the reactions in her that you bring. I see her in private time singing your praise and the light in her face describing your days. And in all of the time since the two of you met, not one word of sorrow or sad or regret. A match made in heaven, if it ever was true, the planets aligned here for Jessica and you. So, I'm going to end with a few thoughts that I chose and suggestions for life that I gently propose. Live every day with your love as a guide. Always give more than your groom or your bride. Finding each other the funniest things and share with each other when your heart sings. And no truer words have ever been penned than the crux of your love is just being best friend. From this day on, you are never alone. Wherever you are, it is your spouse that's your home. And when time is past and the two of you age and your lives are about to turn the last page, you'll see not the wrinkles, nor the gold, nor the gray. Instead, you'll see yourselves as you are on this day. I hope that you give life to my early reprise and that you'll say to each other from tired old eyes. 
There's no Romeo nor Juliet that ever was, is, or will be that could ever compare to what is you and me. I said it before and I'll say it times ten, given the chance I would do it again. If some wondrous force took us back way back when, and the lives that we've lived started over again, I'd again find you and court you as husband or wife. You're the fabric, the purpose, and my reason for life. I am proud and honored at this union. Godspeed, Mr. and Mrs. Michael Robert Smith.